It's beginning to look a lot like Christmas Everywhere you go Take a look in the five and ten Listening once again With candy canes and silver lanes aglow It's beginning to look a lot like Christmas Ties in Cool, thank you. Hello, my name is Martin Evans. I work for Unboxed Consulting. Uh, and I'm going to tell you a little bit about a project called SH24 that we worked on earlier this year. So SH24 stands for Sexual Health 24 Hours a Day. Um, it's a CIC, which is a community interest company. So it's a, it's a not-for-profit uh, social enterprise set up to, in partnership with two NHS trusts, so King's Healthcare Trust and Guy's and St Thomas's in South London with a mission to improve access to sexual health services in South London, initially starting in those two areas, working with Lambeth and Southwark Council as well. Um, and the big, the big picture is to, to extend it nationally as well. <coughs> so sexual health in Southwark and Lambeth is very, very poor. It's amongst the worst in Europe. Uh, HIV is on the rise. Syphilis, surprisingly, is reaching epidemic proportions in Lambeth. Um, gonorrhea and chlamydia are, <laughs> are uh, just steadily uh, quite a problem in the area. Teenage pregnancy is also very high. Uh, SH24 has received funding for, from the Guys and St Thomas's charity to keep them going for four years. So they've got four years before they need to start making a profit which is like a perfect storm. They're, they're a startup, they're well-funded, and they have a, a real passion for lean and agile techniques. They want to run the project the right way. So they came to Unboxed to deliver an alpha and a beta phase. So following GDS standards, service standards, the alpha to prototype, test the service, get to know their users a bit better, and then a beta to build some more robust software which they could put um, several thousand users through as, a, as part of a random control trial. So the first thing we did, we set up a workshop with the stakeholders. Now, SH24, I'm going to have to talk a lot faster than this, sorry, I'm going to speed up. SH24 has a stakeholder workshop, so they've been very smart. The directors is a public health consultant, Gillian. They have the directors of two of the clinics we'll be working with. Um, Paula is uh, also a clinician. The Unbox team is a service designer, Paul Sims, who some of you may know. Uh, full stack developer at the back there, as they usually are, uh, Tom Sabin. The, uh, Rakesh was not part of the alpha team, but he, was the, he would be the scrum master of the B team, so joined us for the inception workshop. We spent, uh, product owner is from the client side, Chris Howroyd, Glyn Parry is the project manager, a few other assorted stakeholders of interest to get buy-in early on. So we spent a good two workshops in a day talking through the ideas, <coughs> at the end of which we came up with a plan for the, their alpha service. So quite simple, the clinics in Southwark and Lambeth are overrun. People queue up, they let people in enough to keep them going for an hour, they send the rest away, so they come back later, get them in again, they do SDI tests, pregnancy tests, get contraception, they have to take a day off work, average waiting time is around three hours, doing a great job but just oversubscribed. So the idea is very simple, allow people to order a test kit online that they can take at home, send through the post them, they can then send it by post to directly to the labs. The labs will process the samples and deliver test results by SMS message. So the biggest fear, the biggest risk, we started by looking at what the biggest risks are. Do people want this service? Um, we decided in the, in the workshop that we would work with users of the existing clinic, existing users in the clinic. So we'd go to the waiting rooms, we'd talk to people, we'd find out how they used the service. We spent a lot of time. We set up a war room near to the clinics. We were given a space in a recently refurbished Victorian mansion house, which was very nice. Um, 
attached to the Maudsley charity actually, so very close to the Camberwell Clinic. We spent a lot of time in the waiting rooms at the clinics, talking to people, showing them things. The first thing we wanted to test was the basic proposition. This is the big risk, will people use our service? We described the service very simply, showed it to people. It took us about 10 minutes to validate that theory. People like, so I don't have to wait here for three hours. No, I can do this at home and get the test results in 10 days. They have to wait two weeks in the clinic, so we can do everything quicker. It was a no-brainer, the service is a, good, is a winner. So, showed people the SMS messages. Interesting, that's touching on um, MVP2. Let's not talk about MVP, um, but you know what they mean. MVP2 would be around support services by a text message or instant messaging. So we started to touch on that too and tested some of those things. How long have I got, Craig? Just doing that quick. Right, cool. So we made a, we wanted to reach out beyond the clinic, so we set up a simple form. We jump-started the design process by using, anybody recognize the form? GDS, open source all their materials. This is GDS style sheets and interface tools that you can grab and use for free. We wanted to give it some kind of authority, it seemed appropriate. So you can see basic questions we need to ask people. We're validating the postcode because we want to limit it to Southern and Lambeth. The biggest another big fear is that this will take off too quickly and they'll have too many users too quickly, such as the demand. What's your gender? Here's the first tricky question. Who do you have sex with? The reason we need to know this is because we need to send them the right kit. So for MSMs, which is a new term for me, men who have sex with men need different test kits to uh, straight men and women. Basically, sexual health is fine as long as you don't have sex with men. <laughs> men are the problem here. Yeah? Um, <laughs> so, <laughs> you're massively lower risk if you don't have sex with men. <laughs> um, so some tricky questions. We're a bit worried. Are people going to get nervous about, as, about us asking these questions? So we thought, okay, let's, let's work around this. Let's have a shopping cart. Do you want a man's kit, a woman's kit? You know, let's make it like you're buying a product. Let's try this tricky stuff. I am a man, woman who has sex with men, women, both. Um, people just said, and none of this nonsense, please. Just let's get to the nitty gritty. They're perfectly happy answering these questions. They know what they're there for. They know what they want. They're quite happy to answer the questions. Um, things get a bit trickier up here. This is the rest of the form. We did split this form into a multi-page form. A, because it was too long. B, because we could, um, we'd be able to measure where people were dropping out. We were so concerned about people not answering these questions. They really don't care, especially young people, people younger than me. They would much rather answer personal questions online than they would go into a clinic and, give it, and speak to a clinician. Older people, oh, I like the face-to-face touchy feely. Young people, no problem at all. Let me do it online. Worried about, worried about security? No, not really. Stick an NHS logo on it, we'll be fine. <coughs> so the people who are worried, though, with the NHS Trust, we had to keep them on board. So we spent a lot of time working with the informa information governance boards at the two NHS Trusts, who are extremely concerned about personal information. So this is a kind of a plan for alpha, late alpha, and the beta, friends and family, friends and family, working with people we knew. Before we, could, before we got buy-in from the Information Governance Trust, Information Governance Boards, there was no way we were gonna go public with it. So this is just some indication of how we broke down, passing information, what information was gonna be passed and by who. Um, lots of stuff that the NHS has to have, like ethnicity, of no significance to the service you're delivering other than if the NHS don't collect that information they can't or, or service providers to the NHS don't collect that information they can't get paid the NHS is a requirement so it's it's a big thing we thought we'll just ask five questions no there's about 30 or 40 different options but again people are just used to it it's it, it, it's a hindrance to the service but they're used to it they get on with it um, Bit of stuff about, about the um, kind of service mapping or experience mapping or story mapping. The whole service through, we expected drop off all the way through. We set up some metrics, use KISS metrics to set up uh, analytics so we could see where people are, are dropping off. Obviously, we need people going through it to do that. We started to, in the discovery phase, they've done some quite sophisticated persona stuff. So we started to just sketch those up, keep them a bit lighter. 
and map on possible pain points for the users in here, where they might drop off, but map them onto individual personas. Um, biggest risk we saw with the red dots are is people are going to have to give blood at home. They're going to have to extract blood from their fingers. This is not easy. So we thought, how are we going to make that easier? This is the blood test kit, lancet, prick your finger, a little vial of blood you have to collect, various wipes and plasters. First draft of the instructions, quite complicated. Um, I'll not explain about the kits now. Interesting thing about anonymizing data on the kits, which I'm not going to be able to cover, but if anybody wants to talk about that, we can. Massive win for the IG boards. If you can anonymize the information you're passing around, so you're not passing personal information with test results, big win, big tick. Um, great idea. Let's make a video of. Oh, is that it? That is it. Bugger. Okay. I have my first question. How Go. does it end? How does it end? <laughs> Blood. Shall I carry on? No. We can, we can demo that. Yeah. Okay. So, what we did is um, we thought we'd make a video for the people who are concerned about giving blood, right? A lot of people are very nervous about it. Made a quick video, spent a day hacking it together. Thought we'd give them the online instructions. Great, they said in the clinic, we'll use that, definitely no problem, we use online instructions. <laughs> we started videoing people. They prick their finger with blood, they've got blood coming out of their finger, they're trying to click their phone to get to the next page of the instructions. <laughs> Interesting thing, everyone said, yeah, no problem, I'd use that, that would be no problem at all. Some people might have a problem, but I'd be fine. No one could do it, so we went back to our paper. But the video is the other interesting thing. The last thing that people are nervous about giving blood want to see is video of people giving blood. They run a mile. <laughs> Literally, people pushing this thing out of the way, closing the laptop, don't show me that. So what we decided was, don't worry about the people that don't want to do it. In fact, show them the video of people giving blood, because otherwise we're wasting NHS money by sending them a kit they're never going to use. So an interesting learning. We thought we were going to find one thing. We found completely opposite. I was going to talk about getting to beta. Beta team, more people introduced, two more devs, designer, Branding, branding designer, scrum master tester joined the team full time. The room got busy. Design suddenly became secondary. The focus was on building a robust system so we could put 3,000 users through it. This is real people with real HIV test results. There was no room for error. The alpha code was thrown away. All the learnings from it, we got people through it. We were determined to put people through the alpha service. We put two or three people through it learned everything, threw it away, and then built some robust software. So four weeks, five weeks of alpha, two week sprints, five, five sprints, and then four weeks of built to build a robust system, implemented some simple branding. Thank you, sorry it went on, Craig. I'd like to sing right within your